Hello and welcome to Defence Line, our weekly program on defence, security and more. There is a rigorous system in place for the selection of the Chief of Army Staff as also the Head of Navy and the Indian Air Force. While this system has broadly stood the test of time, of late it has come under scrutiny following allegations that the so-called line of succession for the Chief is being tinkered with or being manipulated. Is there a need to change the present system wherein on his retirement the Chief's baton generally passes on to the senior most army commander. This is what we discuss today in defense line with Major General Raj Mehta, a defense and security analyst, Lieutenant General Dipinder Singh, a former Southern Army commander, and Lieutenant General B.S. Jaswal, a former Northern Army commander. Gentlemen, welcome to the discussion. But before that, let us look at this report. The dust has barely settled after General V.K. Singh's Supreme Court battle over his age row when another succession battle in the army is about to begin. Lieutenant General Ravi Dastane, currently the Deputy Chief of the Tri-Service Integrated Defence Staff, has filed a statutory complaint stating that if he does not get justice, he will go to the Armed Forces Tribunal and later the Supreme Court. The move gains importance as it could put Lieutenant General Dastane in line for the next Army Chief instead of Lieutenant General Darbir Singh, the Eastern Army Commander who is currently top of the line. The key date in the current dispute was May 31, 2012, when two Army Commander posts fell vacant with the retirement of former Army Chief General V.K. Singh and the Western Army Commander Lieutenant General Shankar Ghosh. Being senior Lieutenant General Suhag was supposed to become an Army Commander, a post that the present Chief General Vikram Singh held, but he could not owing to an discipline and vigilance ban following a notice from the former Army Chief General V.K. Singh. When General Vikram Singh took over as chief, the ban was lifted and Suhag became the Eastern Army commander. Lieutenant General Dastani thus was left out and has since filed a statutory complaint. As of now, the Defence Ministry has asked the Law Ministry to adjudicate on Lieutenant General Dastani's plea. This fresh episode has brought to the fore the important issue of appointment of Army Chiefs. Though the seniority principle for Army commanders has generally been followed by the Chief's post, there have been few instances where seniority has been superseded by political decisions. But of late, allegations of manipulating the line of succession have openly come into the public domain, raising the issue of whether a change in system is called for. Should it be seniority first and merit later or vice versa? We have in conversation with three senior retired army officers. Jaldupinder Singh, since you are the senior most in the panel, let me start with you. Now we follow a system where the senior most army commander makes it to the chief when the post falls vacant. Is there a need to change the, the system and give more uh, credence to merit? You see, to begin with, everyone who has reached the army commander status is presupposed to have equal merit. So therefore, the difference in merit between A and B or C is negligible. <clears throat> if you tinker with the system and you start digging deep, you invite criticism of favoritism, nepotism, religious bias, community bias and so many other types of bias. Whereas this is a more foolproof system where of a group of five or six, whoever is senior is automatically made the chief. But what about the allegations that uh, there have been, uh, you know, efforts to influence the so-called line of succession? <coughs> well, I am uh, not privy to uh, any such uh, uh, dealings, but uh, I can't imagine uh, anyone doing anything like that. But you must have seen some of these media reports. Uh, well, most of the media reports uh, just seek uh, sensationalism and uh, somebody whispers in somebody's ear that uh, this when is happening. Thing, what do we do if uh, somebody moves, uh, files a statutory complaint? I mean, we obviously have to take uh, note of it. Uh, he is in a sense justified, but uh, he must realize that General Sohag was not uh, indicted. It was merely an inquiry going on and he had been given a show cause notice. 
So till he gave that show cause notice and that notice was accepted or rejected, he could not be made the uh, so, so are you suggesting that it is very usual to keep a post vacant uh, for some time? Uh, well, this was a very, very unusual uh, situation and uh, it normally does not happen, but it just hap so happened that at that crucial time and uh, there was no way in which uh, General Dastani could have been made the army commander before the case of General Sohag had been decided. Okay. Major Mehta, what do you think? Is the peasant system kind of promoting uh, merit, meritocracy, uh, especially at the, the highest levels? Indeed not. My view is that the current system does not very much bother for uh, meritocracy in the sense that the uh, DNA of the whole system is date of birth. Now, date of birth and academy merit in a sense when you were very young, maybe 17 to 20, 17 to 19 and you got into a certain situation is what is dictating the current system. But for fear of not being too critical and uh, balanced in my outlook, I must also suggest that though we have parallels in the British Army and the American Army where they prefer merit certainly over seniority, the fact is that we are just 65 years old. The country is evolving and so is the military in many ways. But as uh, General Dapinder said, at that level, at the army commander's level, there is very little to choose from by way of merit. I mean, they are equally, equally, each one is equally, equally good or equally better than the other one. Actually, technically, uh, Mr. Sandhu, uh, there are about 80 to 100 core commanders, all of whom are actually eligible for becoming the chief. When you reach the level of a core commander, technically all of them are eligible to become the chief. But exposure, capability, critical thinking, ability to see the larger picture, etc., etc., is so enormous that I think you need to give merit a huge place which it currently does not have. Let me get General Jaswal into the discussion. Yeah. There have been, uh, you know, allegations in the recent part. Two allegations are very, very clear. One, that General J.J. Singh, when he was the, the chief, he was accused of influencing the line of succession in favor of uh, General Bikram Singh, something which has not exactly been substantiated. The other charge is that General V K Singh, the previous chief, while uh, you know, demitting office a few days before that, he stalled General Sohag's uh, elevation as an army commander. So, line of succession, this is what. So, the line of succession was. So, the, the point I am trying to make is that, uh, is there a need to change the system which kind of encourages or prompts all this? Firstly, Kamal, I, I personally feel that the highest office in the armed forces, in, in the army I would say, uh, to throw insinuations on this very pious office, I think it's not really warranted in public. Can you believe that the chief alone can uh, set a line of succession? Uh, General Dependa sir has been there as an army commander. We all sit over there. There's no question of setting a line of succession. I think exaggeration is a sense of good conversation. And that's how the media picked up this particular thing and they picked up a point and exaggerated the whole thing. In the case of uh, General Dalbir, you see, uh, there is a report of the uh, Central Vigilance uh, Commission by Mr. Whittle that if in case a person is in promotion zone and if in case there is a report against him till the time he is indicted, he will not be denied promotion. I mean, otherwise you will just spiral off a system wherein if I find that person A above me is becoming I'll, send, uh, I'll just write a, a complaint against him so that I become. Right. In this case, had Dastane become, it would have been denied uh, to Dalbir, who's rightfully deserving it. He'd but not I'm, been but indicted. I'm sure General V.K. Singh was aware of uh, the CVC no, recommendations. I would not, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, and that's the reason, and that's the reason he did not give it to uh, Dastane. He kept the vacancy over there. So you saying, uh, you know, uh, you, you think the present system is fine, despite the fact that as an army commander, you must have been reckoning uh, for the chief's post and somebody else made it. No, no, no. I, 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 you see, uh, like uh, General Dipendra sir said very rightly, I think you have been seeped to various uh, layers of validation when you reach that rank. I think all are merit-wise almost the same. And there is the existing system. There is no question of, I mean, I never questioned that system. I mean, person A is there, person B is there, person C. He may think he's uh, the best amongst the lot. But I think uh, everyone, is capable in his own ways and he can contribute in his own ways. Right. Yes, General. Uh, uh, what I wanted to clarify was 
Uh, VK was chief till the day he demitted office. Two days or a day before he demits office, a file comes up to him that there is some allegation against so and so and a show cause notice has been issued to him or is required to be right. issued to him. So as a serving chief at that point of time, he is duty bound to take cognizance of that and take action. He can't on that right let my successor decide. That's passing the buck. So I think that is what VK has done and that was absolutely correct militarily and morally and uh, events have proved that he was absolutely right and uh, Dalbir was cleared of uh, whatever those allegations were and uh, he has become an army commander. Jal Jaswal, uh, how do you react to the charge that the peasant system uh, makes uh, the senior officers very timid if, if their date of birth uh, is correctly, if they are correctly placed in that, uh, in that birth chart? I don't know as to why officers should be timid, no way. This is just perception which has been personified, I think. You know, question of a person being timid. Well, if he is timid, he should not have risen to that rank at all. Once you hold a rank, you have the responsibility of that rank and you are responsible for prosecuting the right thing at the right time. If you become timid, in any case, he doesn't deserve to go ahead. I don't uh, agree Major with Neta, that. Major what do you think? Uh, you know, does the system, uh, the present system, make some of the, the officers timid in their decisions? I think timid is a very strong word. Okay. Perhaps uh, yes, either saying playing safe okay. or uh, you know walking middle of the road, not creating... But when you are dealing with the matters of tactics or strategy, I think even playing safe is, 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 is not the desired I thing. I would no? definitely agree on the requirement of a change. I have already said that right in the beginning, uh, Mr. Sandhu, that uh, the current system, although it is evolving and therefore cannot be categorized in any uh, any particular category. There is definitely a need for having a relook, not just at this system but at the larger picture itself. When I think in this, we cannot get away from the fact that merit must be given a due which it currently does not have. Let me give you an example which will uh, perhaps find uh, uh, approval of both uh, army commanders. Lieutenant General Atta Hasnan commanded 21 corps, commanded 15 corps, did a brilliant job. He is a few months short of the mandatory requirement of becoming an army commander. He will get wasted out as a military secretary. Lieutenant General uh, Sanjay Lamar. Then once you start considering, you know, so many days or start making up on, you know, a, a certain number of uh, shortfall on days, then you open a Pandora's box. No, but the point is that I am talking of merit. Here is a person also. Lieutenant General Sanjeev Langer, one is from the infantry, one is from the armored corps. I can't be accused of taking sides. I am making the point that people whose credibility has been established in command, the toughest possible tests, are suddenly being found not eligible for consideration on the mere plea that the system should not be shaken up and it should remain where it was. It takes me back to Sardar Valdev Singh. In 1948, when the system had to be decided once and for all, he asked Jawaharlal Nehru, should we go on merit, should we go on seniority? Perhaps that question was very loaded and it was correctly asked. It should have been answered appropriately. The vote went in favor of Karyapa, who was senior. Rajendra Singh Ji refused, saying he is senior, therefore I will wait, which is fine. The fact is, what was applicable then? 65 years down the line should not be continued because everything must be re-examined in the context in which it is being studied. It may have been appropriate then not I, to I get your point. Let me come back to you in a little while. All right. Here it is uh, time for I? a short break. When we return, we continue our discussion on whether there is need to change the system of selection of our defense service chiefs. Welcome back. We are discussing if the present system of selection of defense service chief requires a change. Uh, Jal Dipenza, the criticism against the present system is that too much importance is being given to seniority which is fixed way back 35 or 40 years ago when you are in the academy. Do you think there is need to refix the seniority of officers at the mid-career level, maybe say as a, as a brigadier or as a, as a full colonel? You know, we are the only All India service which has promotion examinations which determine your promotion and retaining your seniority, assuming that you go on passing those promotion examinations. You have courses of instruction where you are tested 
tried out, assessed. Now to have another roadblock introduced, I think would be grossly But General Dipinder Singh, don't you think at the NDA or the IMA stage, at the academy stage, the criteria required uh, you know, uh, to, to uh, assess people is very different. You should be academically very good, you should be good in games, sports and things like that. But later, your tactical ability, your strategic capability, your <coughs> capability as a, as a leader of men, all these uh, uh, come out uh, and are more important? Uh, true. I will give you my own example. In my course, uh, the person who got the sword of honor, uh, he drifted off into the then Indian Frontier Administrative Service and he ended up as uh, a secretary level. The person who got the gold medal, Shivraj Singh from Pune House, he retired as a colonel. I was about midway in the course and I was the only one who rose to be army commander. So, there are so many checks and balances in the army that automatically there is weeding out going on all the okay. time. Okay, Major Mehta, do you think there is need to refix seniority at the mid-career level? I would suggest here that the Indian Navy is already doing it. Oh, is it? Yeah. They have a system whereby when an officer starts doing courses and if he performs very well on courses, his seniority is accelerated. So it's not as if people are not toying with the possibility of looking afresh. And I would say that when there is a specified need of relooking at the whole system, evaluating seniority when you become a two star, uh, maybe a one star or a two star, is something that I would be open to with the caution, with the caveat that it would require close study and intimate study. But then the danger is that uh, you know a lot of people could move court, it could lead to litigations. I wonder if it is happening in the Navy. Uh, no, it is not, because they have accepted it as a system, it has been in vogue with them for a very long time. Right. General Jaswal, uh, what do you think of the system in the US, where much more importance is given to, to merit, as one can one can say? The two very clear examples, Colin Powell, I yeah, think 27th or 28th in the, in the order of seniority, yeah. was made the chairman, joint chiefs of staff. Uh, the other example is of General Peter uh, Shoemaker. Yeah. He was recalled two and a half years after his retirement. So how do you think uh, you know that system works very well and uh, yet you know we don't think of it? I think uh, let's not compare the US Army with our Army. Our system and uh, environment is totally different from the US Army. So let's not uh, strike a con you know, comparison between the two. But uh, the earlier point which you had spoken, if I may comment yeah. on it. You see, if we keep refixing seniority at various levels, it's got a, a far-reaching consequence. Um, there are a lot of likes and dislikes, it's a fact. And you suddenly find that this chap is up, generally he may be up, but the other guy, he says, my chap is down, so I must push him up. So he brings him down and brings him up. I mean, that kind of thing will start off. Okay. So this is a time-tested thing. And like, um, well, there are personal likes I don't want to quote. Some chaps deserved um, awards, they didn't get it. Some chap deserved certain appointments, they didn't get it. But that's a personal predilection. It keeps changing. It keeps changing with individual to individual. But when, it, when you take a holistic view, the system is quite stable. And because for senior ranks, in any case, you're being merited in terms of the selection in that bracket. Okay. You're being sieved through various layers. And there is a collective wisdom which is doing it. It's not an individual. Yes, Janmata. I have two brief points. The first brief point is that I think our complete reporting system, which is currently ACR-led, is very linear and has tunnel vision. It does not take the larger picture at all and therefore it is subjective. The other thing is that this is the season of diseases, illnesses like laryngitis and all. Let me talk of another disease, lanyarditis. Okay. <laughs> when you have a problem with subjectivity and you have a problem with lanyarditis, you create mayhem and your uh, desire to be objective and place equals from which uh, eight of which you want to choose the chief of army staff, you already hit a roadblock. Jal Dipinder Singh, are you aware of this disease <laughs> which uh, Jal Mehta has talked about? Is no, I don't know this <laughs> lanyard <laughs> itis, I, what exactly uh, is. Sir, uh, uh, favoring a person from your unit or your pulton or because of past <laughs> association or because of having worked together. This is what this is referred to. That, yes, that, right? that is precisely the point I was making. 
which, which supports my view that the present system is the that correct is. system because if you go in for that merit thing, you are inviting people to be more subservient, you are inviting people to indulge in nepotism, religious likes and dislikes, community likes and dislikes and things like that. Here it is pure and simple. Let me uh, talk of a broader issue. General Dependent Singh, you've been MA2, the, the then Chief General uh, Monarch Shah, then fi later Field Marshal. You've been an Army Commander yourself. Now, uh, is there a system at the <coughs> Army Commander's level to test an officer on his uh, tactical or strategic capability vis-a-vis -vis the, the threats at hand? <coughs> it is purely based on discussion. Okay. Because uh, as soon as the person reaches Army Commander status, his dossier is closed and uh, there are no further entries made in it. Uh, then uh, <coughs> uh, there is also this that uh, when the chief makes the recommendation to the government about his successor, he does not normally say that I prefer A, B, C, D or A over B and C. Okay. Uh, but what he can say is that this is the list. In this, I do not recommend so and so because of character shortage or uh, whatever, uh, some deficiency or the other. So he can only say that, not make a positive recommendation that I recommend so and so. I'll give you an example. <coughs> when he was to. Uh, <coughs> retire, relinquish command, uh, he spoke to Mrs. Gandhi and said that the best person to succeed him would be General Bhagat. You are talking about uh, General Monarch Shah? Yeah. And uh, he was told by Mrs. Gandhi that uh, he is uh, uh, too pro-Sikh because all the photographs that appear show him with Sikh troops. And uh, secondly, that uh, the then Defence Minister, Mr. Chavan, uh, has been agitating that there has been no Maratha uh, chief and therefore General Bivur should be made the chief for which he had been given an extension anyway. And of course, the Field Marshal clarified to Mrs. Gandhi that the reason he is surrounded by Sikhs in photographs is because he is Colonel of the Sikh ally. So, therefore, when he is visiting them, he will only be around with six. So, that is the sort of thing, uh, what I am saying is that can lead us astray. No, I get your point. Then, just while at the chief's level, the, the chief is often called upon to interact with the other service chiefs of the Navy and the Air Force. Yes. He is also called upon to interact all the time with the civilian establishment. So, is there a system where the army commander's uh, abilities, uh, capabilities in intrapersonal and interpersonal relations are kind of put to test or questioned? I don't think so. You see, there can be interpersonal differences in any organization and uh, army is no exception. But let me also tell you at the same time, the army commanders generally, they have served together somewhere or the other and they have the best of relations basically for the organization. And if there is any problem in interpersonal relation, that would be social. But professionally, I don't think it is ever coming to the fore that they are having any differences. There is uh, intellectual dissent, which goes on at that level. When the discussion is there, topic yeah, being discussed, yeah. I may not agree with someone else, he may not agree with me. But that is an intellectual dissent to arrive at a correct decision. But there is no such thing which are brought to fore in front of the public or anything. General Mehta, since you are running out of time, uh, I know you have a definite point on, on, on merit, but then the danger is <coughs> that if you tinker with the present system, the chances of political interference could increase and we all know the what happened in 1962 when General uh, Call was uh, you know promoted out of turn. Mr. Sandhu, the political interference aspect has always been there. It was there in the case of General Bevur, it was there in the case of General Bhagat, it was there in the case of General Sena. In any case, Technically, the current army chief, the present army chief is not really required to make any recommendation. The list of eight people goes up to the government and the government decides whom they would want to appoint, although they have largely been following the system of whoever is senior. 
Therefore, the political interference is always there, will always remain there. So you are primarily referring to the, the, you know, the super sessions which have taken place, yeah, which have so been more of an exception than a rule, really, no? But having said that, two exceptions have been made. One of a person who had won the Victoria Cross, he would perhaps have been the only chief uh, in the last hundred odd years who would have been a chief and a Victoria Cross on that, which is equivalent to the Paramit Chakra. Anyway, leaving that aside, what I am trying to say is that the current system in America and in UK needs to be viewed with some respect. They have a definite system for fast time acceleration of bright people who are picked up when they are major lieutenant colonel and then nurtured. Secondly, they have programmed courses of education to allow a senior officer to develop for handling senior responsibility. To give you an example, a corps commander generally handles 50 to 70 thousand troops. Right. A chief is expected to handle 1.3 million in our case. An army commander may handle like him and like him, maybe 3 to 4 lakhs. There is a whole world of difference between being a corps commander and eligible for chief, between being an army commander, let's say ARTRAC. ARTRAC is commanding 300 people and 25 teaching establishments. The northern army commander, the uh, southern army commander handling lakhs of troops and interfacing with... Before we close the discussion, the just services. a quick comment from General Jaswal. What do you think of the, the system? He says that we need to look at the system in, in UK, not just the US. No, I don't think so. Because well tested and I don't think there is any requirement of changing it. There are certain uh, areas which need uh, refining, but not to that extent to go in for a total change. For instance, uh, in this system what you are talking about, uh, selective uh, meriting at certain stage. Now there are people who do not make it in a particular board, they get a redressal and they get back their original seniority. Now there is a question mark because he has been rejected once, but yes. he gets his original seniority. The question mark for that, you give the benefit of the doubt to the person, but you do not adjust him at the same seniority level. You adjust him at the bottom of the course because he is not made it with them, but okay. above the lower course. Okay. I mean, there are certain refinements which are there, and uh, otherwise so the system, the system is works quite well. well. Thank you very much for joining us in the discussion. Thank you. Since no system of selection of a service chief can be free from manipulation, whether we have a system of seniority come merit or merit come seniority, what is important is to throw up the right kind of military leaders who instead of twisting the rules, play by the rules. Sadly, there have been instances of late where this has been the failing. That is all in Defence Line today. Do write your feedback. Good luck and goodbye.